they are everywhere now. We use them with our phones, with DSLMs, DSLRs, and cinema cameras. A tool that was once out of reach for most of us is now available and affordable for almost everyone to a point where we kind of overuse them. Let me show you now how I use gimbals in my work and how this cool tool can be really effective when used wisely. out there it has a purpose you only use them when needed when necessary do you always want these floaty perfect shots in your film no because when you use them too much it diminishes their effect in your video just because you can doesn't mean you have to I'm not a fan of handheld or over-the-shoulder type of shots especially when they're made with DSLM or DSLRs because they are too light and the shakiness makes the footage hard to watch. That's why I used to add accessories to add a little bit of weight to reduce that effect. Otherwise, I use tripods, which sometimes can be enough for an entire project. For pan and tilt movements, you don't need more. And then I got my first gimbal and that additional control, being able to stabilize almost any shot made things easier. These days, when I want to introduce a character, emphasize a moment, when I want the audience to dive into the video, I do a little fancy push in or a pull out to reveal something. It can be over a long distance, short, fast, or slow. Depending on your settings, you can avoid that perfect floating shot and find something in between that makes it less perfect. And then you have these projects where you want it super stable throughout, like in the one shot video I've done a while back. This works well with dance videos because everything happens within the frame. The rhythm of the scene is imposed by the performer and not by you in the edit with multiple cuts. So if my performer uses very little space, chances are I will be on a tripod. If the dancer covers greater distances, uses much more space, then I will probably use a gimbal. Following are examples of shots I used to do handheld. I now use a gimbal as I can make the desired shot much faster. I recently had in my hands the Crane 3S Pro because I needed a little bit more space for longer lenses plus it has a maximum payload of 6.5 kilograms, which makes it great for heavier loads. And here is a quick test video I made with a hand balanced circus artist here in Toulouse with the Crane 3S Pro. I did a mix of static and moving shots. I mainly used the L locked and PF pan and follow mode.
ability to lock each section when balancing the gimbal eases the process, a feature that came later on DJI's RS2. I know this model came out a few years ago, but it doesn't mean it's outdated. I quickly compared it to the RS2 because they were direct competitors at the time. I've worked multiple times with the RS2, so I was able to see the similarities and differences. I have the entire Pro package with an additional powering system, the wireless transmitter and the whole zoom and focus system too. The main differences are in the way they are built and the maximum payload. If you wish, you plan on using cinema cameras, heavier cameras and longer lenses, then I recommend you get the Crane 3S Pro. If you are a low angle shot type of shooter, then again, I recommend the Crane 3S Pro. I had a better experience shooting with it because of how it's made and this is directly linked to my shooting style. Overall, it's well made. You feel they paid attention to details. I prefer their system over DJI's RS2. The only complaint in terms of build quality for me is the battery compartment. It feels fragile. The additional smart handle is made of plastic and I understand that it makes it light and this is definitely a plus, but I wish they chose another material that would give us a better feeling. And that hand grip, that hand grip, I wish it wasn't that slippery. My assistant uses the RS2 more and I switched recently to the Crane 3S. It is still a great gimbal worth every penny. One remark though, here in France, it is hard to customize and add accessories to the Crane 3S if you want to go beyond what the brand proposes. I don't know if DJI made a special partnership with Tilta or with Smallrig because both these brands made an entire set of accessories, an ecosystem that helps you go even further and further customize and adapt your gimbal to your needs. DJI released this year the RS3, RS3 Pro. Will there be a Crane 4S, a Crane 4S Pro? I don't know, but since my experience with the 3S Pro is really positive, I'm curious to see where they can go with a new version. And what about you? Do you use gimbals in your work? How and why? Tell us in the comments below and share with us any links with your work. I'm really curious to see how you actually use them. And this is my third video of the week. Yes, my third video. If you missed the others, please check them out. Will there be a fourth one? I don't know. You will have to wait to find out. Until then, take care and please have a good one.